Well, hello, good afternoon. This is Raf and welcome to Technic Antica. Today's video, Sir Tom Jones, the baritone that could sing high notes like a tenor. So, who is Tom Jones? Well, I believe many, many of you should know that he's one of the most recognizable voices in pop. But what is that voice? Again, is he a baritone? Is he a tenor? Is he a freak of nature? Or is he the result of a classical technique applied to a different world? Well, in, in this video, we're going to dive into the science, the history and training behind Tom Jones's voice, debunking myths, clarifying fach and showing how technique not just talent, made this voice last. Okay, so item number one, Fach controversy. Is he a baritone? Is he a tenor? Tom Jones often hits A4, B4, C, C sharp 5 with apparent ease. So many assume that he is a tenor, but he is not. His tessitura, his vocal weight, and default resonant, apart from his anatomy, all points to a baritone classification. What he developed is what we would call an extended chest dominant mix, not a tenor mechanism, but a baritone's tool for climbing higher. Belting versus classical legit voice production. In belting, the thyroretinoid TA muscle remains dominant, maintaining the vocal folds in a shorter, thicker configuration to preserve the chest resonance even on high pitches. The cricothyroid CT muscle engages minimally, enough to reach higher frequencies without lengthening the folds excessively. The arytenoid cartilages provide strong medial compression to resist air pressure, often resulting in a high subglottic pressure system. The larynx remains neutral to slightly elevated, allowing a brighter, more speech-like projection. This strategy is efficient when coordinated well, but requires careful balance to avoid vocal fatigue. In classical singing, the cricothyroid CT muscle plays a leading role in lengthening and thinning the vocal folds for higher pitches. The thyroid TA remains engaged, but in a more passive role as speech increases, ensuring a smooth transition between registers. The arytenoids adduct firmly, but with refined closure for efficient phonation. The larynx stays stable, low to neutral position, and the vocal track is lengthened for optimal resonance. This approach prioritizes vowel integrity, breath support, and low subglottic pressure, producing a rounder, more sustained tone suitable for unamplified singing. Okay, so historical background. Mario Lanza, Rosati lineage. As a teen, Jones admired Mario Lanza. trained by no, none other than Enrico Rosati, who also taught Beniamino Gigli, among other vocal monsters. This vocal heritage emphasized anything and everything that has to do with classical singing. Resonance, breath support, efficient uh, fold coordination. So even without conservatory, Jones absorbed this sort of operatic values 
breath supports. They used to say that he was breathing like a boxer, uh, you know, phrasing, uh, vowel modification, etc. So it is well known from very reliable sources that during the 70s and 80s, uh, Jones worked with vocal coaches in Las Vegas. He studied his craft. So quite seriously, unintentionally, he just didn't rely on talent. Uh, like Jones, Elvis Presley, none other than Elvis Presley, was a baritone who idolized opera. And in interviews, uh, he credited uh, recordings from the greatest metropolitan opera um, as his vocal foundation, basically. So you can see that both singers used classical coordination in pop rock contexts. Right, so Lyrics Function Summary. If we were to explain, you know, the TA muscles that are right in here, along with, you know, the CT and the arytenoid closure, you know, John's coordinations, all three, you know, stretching while staying grounded, never flipping, never yelling. So if I were to demonstrate this live, I would go with fall in love, you know, fall in love. No, I never wanna fall in love. Fall in love again. As you see, this is not operatic singing, I would be using a totally different mechanism. I'll show you now. Okay, so if I were to sing this in an operatic way, it would sound something like that. Fall in love. No, no, I wanna fall in love. Fall in love again. I think you can appreciate the difference. Okay. Well, believe it or not, we have reached the end of the video. And now I'm going just to provide you with a few examples of uh, two of my students. One is a bass baritone and the other one is a tenor. And um, also some excerpts from yours truly. Impersonating or singing um, Tom Jones in a sort of a Tom Jones kind of style because no matter what you do, you will never sound like Tom Jones. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, no matter what you do, you will never sound like Tom Jones. Even if we try to get into the technical part of it, uh, he's a unique artist. And um, one thing is universal. You may not like him, but I believe it's undeniable that he is indeed a great artist. Thank you ever so much again. If you like the content, like and subscribe, comment. And remember, if you need anything, I'm here to help. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>